This episode may not be suitable for all listeners. I talk about the death of Trayvon Martin in the second part, but you can feel free to skip through that. As basic as the need for warmth and being covered is, fashion has taken a basic need to a completely different level at times. You could pick up any yearbook from the 1980s as proof of that. But sometimes the most simple of things can create the biggest impact especially with fashion. Look at what James Dean accomplished with just a white t-shirt. Or even being able to look at the backside of Bruce Springsteen in his iconic jeans and know exactly who he is. As I'm from New England, you can't get much more basic than a sweatshirt at this time of year. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind hoodies. But first, a quick word from hashtag Potter and Family a great group of indie podcasters like me. Want to know the story behind Potter and Family? Potter and Family started with a hashtag for indie podcasters, the podcasters who do this for fun and because we're passionate. We're not the big podcast you hear about, most likely. We don't have 10 to 15 people helping us with production. But that doesn't mean the quality and content you're getting isn't as good as any of those shows. Is there an area of interest you like talking to people about? Listen to an indie podcast on that topic. The hosts are incredibly reachable. We're basically clamoring to hear from listeners. We're just as much your fans as you are ours. No matter what you're interested in, Potter and Family's got a show for you. Like movies and TV? Check out the Epic Film Guys, the Something Something cast, the Boxers, or the Countdown Movie and TV Review. Do you like comedy? Check out Everyone Has a Podcast, The One Word Go Show, Afterburn 739, Now That I'm Older, Rick and Paul Heal the World, or Off in the Weeds. How about random trivia and fun facts? Check out The Endless Knot, or The Story Behind. Like comic books and geek culture? Check out Geek Yogurt Podcast or Little Geek Lost. I could go on, and believe me when I say there are a whole lot more where that came from. But you can find all these and more by searching the hashtag Potter and Family on Twitter. Much like jeans, hoodies got their beginning as a garment for the working class. When Knickerbocker Knitting Company began developing a process to sew thicker underwear material, they marketed sweatshirts in the early 1930s to laborers and athletes. This would add an extra layer of warmth and protection against the elements. In 1934, Harold Lipson would buy the Knickerbocker Knitting Company and rename it Champion. Athletes wore sweatshirts and hoodies on the sidelines to stay warm in inclement weather, and they would lend their hoodies to their girlfriends to wear. And if these girls were anything like me, they were probably pretty hesitant to give them back. To all my exes who are still looking for your hoodies, Yeah, I still have them. The hoodie evolved from being considered sportswear to becoming actual fashion because of the popularity in high schools. In the 70s, hoodies began popping up in New York City for break dancers to keep their bodies warm before dancing, and graffiti artists and vandals to keep a low profile. And even though Sylvester Stallone's Rocky is seen running up the steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, wearing one drenched in sweat in 1976, the hoodie still brought with it a bad reputation. Enter the hip-hop, skater, and punk crowds in the 80s and 90s. Not that they were going to change anyone's perception of hoodies, but they did at least bring hoodies more into the daylight. Hoodies became even more intertwined with music when rap and hip-hop artists began donning them in the 90s. Seeing a teen in a hoodie became associated with rebellion and defiance. And for some, the perception still remains today. Hoodies became a symbol of unnecessary gun violence in February of 2012, when 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was shot walking from a convenience store to his father's fiancé's house in Central Florida. He had been wearing a dark gray hoodie with a hood up when George Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch volunteer, called 911 to report Martin as a real suspicious guy. 
This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. It's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Despite being told by the 911 dispatch operator that there was no need to follow Martin, Zimmerman did so anyway with his 9mm semi-automatic handgun. What happened between the time Zimmerman began following Martin and police being dispatched to the scene after neighbors called 911 is known fully only to Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, who was found by police after being fatally shot in the chest, face down in the grass. In the investigations and hearings that followed, Zimmerman claimed self-defense, and during his trial, the judge reminded the jury members of Florida's stand-your-ground law, in which Zimmerman had no duty to retreat and the right to use deadly force if he believed it was necessary to defend himself. The hoodie became a symbol for those in support of Trayvon Martin, as he was wearing one that night. For those who opposed and worked to repeal the stand-your-ground law, for bringing awareness to racial profiling, and for those who believe justice wasn't served when George Zimmerman was declared not guilty. If you're a woman, you've probably heard, you shouldn't dress like that, you might give men the wrong idea. Does another wrong idea occur in people's minds when they see someone, particularly someone of a different race, wearing a hoodie? Geraldo Rivera was heavily criticized when he urged black and Latino parents not to let their children wear hoodies, saying the hoodie was just as much responsible for Trayvon Martin's death as George Zimmerman. Rivera has since apologized. Some school districts around the world have banned hoodies, and former Prime Minister Tony Blair endorsed campaigns to ban hoodies from being worn in public places. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has almost a cartoon-like closet of nothing but gray shirts and hoodies, though popularizing the versatility of the garment. It's good for giving off a friendly, casual vibe. And who's going to argue with the CEO of Facebook? When putting the hood up, it can signal, nope, I'm not in the mood to talk to anyone right now. And as I was writing this episode, it was the perfect accompaniment for that point of fall when I wasn't ready to turn the heat on, but I still needed a bit more warmth. Plus, I can turn it around and fill the hood with popcorn for an easy feeding trough. Don't judge. It's kind of amazing. Information for this episode was sourced from Rolling Stone, CNN, The Miami Herald, Time, The New York Times, NPR, and The Washington Post. For these links and more, visit the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Twitter at storybehindpod or subscribe on your favorite podcatcher of choice so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.